Certain moments in time are fixed. All systems online, 100%, not a single delay. Everything else is in flux, anything can happen, but those certain moments, they have to stand. Don't you worry, Captain, we are gonna fly. This base on Mars, what happens here must always happen. This is what. David, I read that you walked off the, your, the set of the final, your final Doctor Who show just a few days ago, right before you came to Comic-Con. Is that true? Oh, not quite. No, it was a, it was a couple of months ago now. Yeah, um, I can't remember the date, do you? End of May, May the 21st, something like oh, that. Oh, there you go. Not that I memorise uh, these things. Yeah, so I, I finished that, and then I did a week on the, the children's show, that with the spin-off from Doctor Who, the Sarah Jane Adventures, did that. And... Um, and then I shot Hamlet. We did. I did. I did, done Hamlet on stage, so we did that for the BBC. So it was a little while ago now, but still very fresh in the memory. But was it traumatic to turn in your TARDIS for the last time? It was. Uh, it was. It was sad. Yeah. Uh, it's been. It's been a big four years um, for me, and it's been life changing in many, many ways. And I'm sure it'll never quite go away. But it was. Uh, it felt good. It felt exciting to finish. I think we finished on a high. Oh. Um, the scripts that Russell's written for the, the, the big finale uh, felt worthy of, uh, you know, going out on. <laughs> they weren't small, were they? Not small. Not small. No. There weren't many ordinary days on no, not really. finale. Well, Russell, you are coming off of the tremendous, the huge success of the Torchwood miniseries in the UK. That's and right. And then here it went over like gangbusters, so you yeah. must be... F you must be feeling very good these days. I was very exhilarated by that, actually, because none of us saw it coming, really. We worked very hard on it, and you always hope these things will be a success, and you do these interviews, go, yes, yes, it's the best thing in the world, and everyone should watch it, and then they did, which was a big surprise, and delighted, I'm delighted with that cast and that crew, and, bleh, and actually that show, Bless It, has often been in Doctor Who's shadow, and it felt like it sort of stood up for the first time on its own, really, which was wonderful. I'm really pleased for the cast, really. It was terrific, I thought. Thank you, yeah, so. So did I. Loved it. Oh, thank you very much. Brilliant. Yeah, dark piece of work, but... Um, it was, wasn't yeah. it? Yes. That's good, we like that. So, so you've moved to Los Angeles recently. I and have. I was wondering if there was a specific project that's brought you here. Oh, not particularly. There's a few things brewing in development. I think I'm just still sort of acclimatizing. I think I won't know for concretely until next year. I think around about sort of the turn of the year, I'll start getting specific ideas. So a couple of things that you can't talk about yet, but um, fingers crossed they'll work out. Was this the first time that you'd ever been to a fan convention, right? At the San Diego Comic Con was, yes, it was. I'd never been to anything even remotely like that before. I uh, didn't quite know what to expect. Mm. But we had a great time. We had such a uh, warm and uh, effulgent reception. <laughs> it was, uh, I, I think it took us a bit by surprise. It was brilliant. And I, frankly, it was brilliant to see David being so loved by so many people. Which And we didn't know because. It was a lovely crowd, and David had like a standing ovation, and we sort of thought, oh, that's normal, you know, if you did a cartoon in the 1970s, yes. that's what you get at Comic-Con. Yes. But I gather, I've read clippings and online stuff since they know you were like a rock star there. Well, you were right. too. I mean, the, the whole reception we got was, was, it was really lovely. sensational. Yeah. It was great. It, it, seemed, it was lovely. Well, it seemed like the, the Doctor Who panel was like Beatlemania. <laughs> there we go. We'll have that it on a T-shirt. Well, yes, well, I did feel a bit like that. I did think this is my rock star moment. I've got to drink this up because life may never be like this again. Yeah. <laughs> Were you, did, you guys, did you have a chance to actually walk around the floor or there was, that was impossible? Not really. Ah, uh, no, no. I did a little bit of it. I did some signings on the floor. Um, Do you know, one, one, one of the uh, uh, backstage security people actually took me out onto the grid that overlooks the floor. <laughs> so I got, to, I got to look down upon it. Wow. And uh, just see the, uh, see it all milling around and all happening. I mean, it's a huge event. It is vast. Beautifully organised. Mm -hmm. You know, the amount of people who clearly descend on this city and the amount yeah. of stuff that's going on, the amount of projects that are being shouted about. It's a lot of work. But it was, in, it was incredibly well run, I thought. Yeah. So you had a good time. The shopping is the best part, I think, about Comic Con. Yeah. It's a pity you didn't get to do all yeah. that. There's a lot of good toys for sale. Though. Right. Yes. Sure. I thought I could lose myself and then spend hundreds of dollars. And people have those big bags. They came with those giant yes. bags to fill with merchandise. Of which there was a Doctor Who one there this year. There was, yeah. I'm pleased to see. David, how can you leave Doctor Who? Isn't it like Sean Connery leaving behind James Bond? I mean, you get to play the coolest guy in the galaxy. Mm. How can you turn that? I know. It does seem, when you put it like that, it does seem absurd. I suppose I'm leaving it in a way because I've had such a good time, because it's been such a unique four years um, that I've loved uh, and had 
the best time working on the best script. And you, I just, I suppose, I think it, it, it pays to take a deep breath and jump when things are good sometimes. I think you can, I, you know, you can, you, can, you can overstay your welcome and I don't want to do that. I think it's always better to leave yourself and the audience wanting more. Mm -hmm. uh, Russell was leaving, it felt, so it felt like a, a, an obvious stepping off point for all of us really to go together. Uh, which allows us all to tell a big farewell story together as well. Right. I just think it's the right thing to do. You know, I, may, I might live to regret that, but I don't think so. I think it feels right. It feels we're, we're handing the, the, the shoe over in rude health, and that, that, that feels good too. For sure. Uh, it, it feels like, it, you know, we've, we, we've taken it and we've made it something, and now, now it can go on and, and live and do well Absolutely. and prosper. What about you? What, did, what, what made you decide to leave your the, the childhood dream? I mean, I know, yeah. same thing really, because it had been the dream. It had been so brilliant that never wanted to get bored of it, never wanted to get tired of it. And I literally think every single episode we made was marvellous. I really do. Um, and that's because so many people worked so hard on them. Mm. And at the same time, there are other things you want to do. You know, there's other voices you want to use, there's other things to explore. So, um, Onwards and upwards, really, but with the happiest and best memories you could possibly imagine. Did you feel that in the final scripts you had a chance to say what you had wanted to say with Doctor Who and you were very satisfied with the way it wrapped up? Oh, no, not, not in, I mean, I don't think there's any definitive statement about Doctor Who. I'd hate to watch the script that, that ever explained why he always comes to Earth or something like that. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I hate to nail the, the program down because it's so loose and fluid a format, but I. I got to write for David, which was always the joy, and, and to stretch the Doctor into new areas, and to, it does explore the character in, in ways that I think we'd never imagined doing, actually, at, yeah. the, at the end. There's more darkness, more joy, always, it's still very But also the very bits. fact that this character is coming to the end, this version of the character is coming to the end of his days, and he's aware of that, and the sands of time are running out, that allows you to tell a slightly different story. Yes. That if it's an ongoing series where it have to, you have to reset to zero at the end of every episode, you can't do, but we're... Yeah. We're afforded the, the the liberation, I guess, of taking and him right with the, the edge. With the luxury that the audience knows he's yes. leaving as well, which yes. is right. you're playing an extraordinary game on all sorts of meta levels of, yeah. of story, which is really, which sounds really posh, but actually it just makes for a great big, wild, yeah. bold story. Exciting. Yeah. Exciting. Exciting. And exciting. Another reason why it just made sense for us to go at the same time. Yeah. And it's not, it's not like a treatise on death or something. It's a great big adventure. No, it's just a really oh, exciting story. Really goes for it, yeah. Well, you said dark. Now, is, was there anything, I mean, obviously, Children of Earth is pretty dark that was a script, dark but was there anything that was, you know, in the pre-Watershed Doctor Who time slot that you couldn't do or you might felt be a little bit too frightening for children or too, too dark? Was there anything that you, you pulled back from? No, we were very careful. I think, I think having known Doctor Who all my life, literally since I was three years old, I know its borders very well. And so never, actually, there was never anything the BBC said, you can't do that. There was never anything that I felt constrained by. I mean, I mean, a lot of the rules we, I imposed myself. There's no blunt. In very, very rare instances, do we see blunt? There's not a BBC guideline on that. That's mine. That's saying it's wrong for this show, and prolonged suffering and things like that. You know, there's things. It's great to give children a scare and a thrill. There's a line you cross at which it's not clever to damage children and to give them nightmares and traumas that might last beyond the narrative. So um, it's just common sense at the end. I do think having been it, steeped in it works. Yes, and it is, but it is one of those shows that, because there's a rites of passage, I think, as a child, in being scared just the right amount. Mm. Um, and I think, I think we go right to the edge of that. I think but oh, The Waters yeah. of Mars is probably, That's the, the next special is probably as, as, as downright Yes. Creepy and, and gothic. Actually, some of the stuff the master gets up to, probably on Christmas Day, uh, is <laughs> yeah. going to be yeah. pushing it. I thought we'd push it right towards the end. There, are, yeah. there is some stuff that. Responsibly. Never too far. Responsibly. Never too far. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you, you, some eyebrows might raise. <laughs> so, David, what was your reaction when you read the final script? I wonder if you cried. I did a little bit. Yeah. It was funny because you, it's always been my favourite part when the new script arrives and you, and you find out where, where you're going next. Um, and I was slightly trepidatious because thought, this is the last one, this has got to be special, you know. Um, and what if, what if the inspiration runs out? Or what if, you know, what if it can't quite match the expectation? Um, but I should never have doubted Russell, of course. <laughs> and it was all there and it was, it was, it's, yeah, it's sad. It's very exciting. It's thrilling, and it yeah. does new things to the show that haven't been done before, and that's very exciting. And, and, and there are revelations that you don't see coming, and then there are just 
beautiful moments of humanity and it's and about sustained dialogue scenes for, yeah with david and bernard cribbins that are just i mean mm. to write for those two what a joy and then to watch the final versions is just, just it's as big and as strong as all the monsters and spaceships and fighting and explosions just two men sitting together two old men both as wise yeah. as each other yeah. um but the, what they think about the world and life and death it's, it's gorgeous stuff it really gorgeous stuff were there um, a lot of crying on set? There was a bit, yes, it has to be said. It, at various points, because there are various scenes which became very resonant when we were shooting them. Uh, and then, of course, there was the final day and when everyone says goodbye. I mean, a lot of the crew are back there again. They're, they're now working on season five. They're fickle. Basically. Yes, they just yes. Fickle. They abandoned us like old lovers um, and <laughs> moved on. <laughs> <laughs> well, did, I, want, I wonder how much influence either of you had on the the new Doctor Who, did, when the, the selection process oh, was going on. Absolutely nothing, nothing to do with us. Absolutely nothing to do Which is quite right, too. Yeah. Uh, even, I mean, I, even if they'd offered, I can't think why they would have offered, but we would have said no, because it's, it's not ours, it's someone else's. Yeah. And we should be irrelevant now. Yeah. It's absolutely a new team, it'll have a new spirit, new writers. Matt Smith is the new Doctor, who's going to be wonderful. You know, I've seen his stuff, and it's, it's fantastic. So it's just the right way yeah. of doing it. How much communication do you have with the, the, the set? Currently. Well, I mean, there are, we have friends there, mm. you know, uh, Stephen Moffat, someone we both work with a lot. Yes. Uh, I know, I now know Matt, I know, you know, Karen Gillan was on the show yes. when we worked on it. So, and all the crew that we worked with for all these years, a lot yeah. of them are still there. So we have lots of contacts, but I, I, I'm personally not asking any questions. I don't want to know. No. I'm no. quite enjoying seeing it all unfold and, and looking yeah. forward to seeing what's going to come out. Yeah, so we say, how's it going to them? And they're all yeah. excited, brilliant, they love this, they've got these plans and everything. But again, you go, oh, don't tell me too many yeah, plans. Yeah, yeah. So it's that yeah. friendly contact and, and, and it's all you need. And they're busy. Yeah. You know, let's right. face it, they, they, they work, finishing work at 10 o'clock at night and going home exhausted. So yeah. um, they haven't got time for us anymore, David. No, we they don't call, on. they don't write. It's, it's <laughs> So, how will it feel to be fans and to watch Doctor Who? Exciting. I'm so excited about that. It's just marvellous. I sort of, I sort of suspect that somehow we're bound to see the first episode at a launch or something. Do you think? We'll to, yeah, I think somehow we'll, we'll be get given that. We can't go to the launch without the Ghost of Christmas Park. I know, that's true. Yes, let's not go. Right. <laughs> let's, well, let's go with our faces pressed up against the glass. <laughs> like that. But I think somehow we're going to see the first one, but then we'll have a whole run of yeah. 13 episodes. That is exciting. Like, I suspect there might be. I think I might have a, a, a period of adjustment, just getting used to the fact that uh, it, it, it's nothing to do with me anymore. Yeah. Might, but I think I can't imagine it'll take me more than a couple of weeks, and then I'll just be loving it. When they when they announced uh, that, that they had started filming again, and they released some photographs of, of of Matt and Karen on set, I found myself genuinely excited to yeah. be looking them up and seeing what it looked like. like I had no moment time. of no moment of thinking. Oh, it should be me there. It just—it feels like the right. I think it feels like the right moment for them and the right moment for us to move on. And it, it just feels right. I think. Excited for them. Yeah. Brilliant. Russell, how long do you think it will take before you're writing another role with David in mind? Oh, that's, that's an excellent question. Cool, but... <laughs> excellent question. I'm very glad you asked that. I oh, should be listening to is this. Is that the time? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> I must go. I would love to at any time. I mean, we have worked together before. We did yeah. Casanova together. That's where we first met and worked together. So we need the hat trick now. But. Yeah. Def anytime, absolutely, might be my honour. Thank you, sir. Well, I'm ready. I'm just waiting for. I'm waiting for the phone call. Absolutely, that love. Keeping you. myself free. <laughs> good, good to hear it. For both of you, having ex achieved this much success, what is on your to-do list at this point? It doesn't work like that, really, does it? You do. I think I the worst thing you could do now is say, "What's my next success?" I just want to do something good. Mm -hmm. You know, something good. If you're writing well, you're just honest, and that might be very, very small. It might be about two people sitting in the kitchen. I just, you know, there's just there's always a new emotion to be discovered or a new take on something. So I think you could go mad saying, I must be successful again. Um, it, I literally just can't think like that. Think. I've never thought, I've never been very good at thinking tactically, career wise. It's, it's a hard thing to do. Mm. I, partly as an actor, you only have a limited amount of power anyway. You know, you can, if you're lucky, you get to choose between two projects. Most of the time, you're just glad to be working. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, just hope that something will come up that'll be good, that'll, that'll be challenging. and where or when or what that might be is sort of in the hands of others probably. Are you, are you getting a lot of offers from Hollywood right now? Uh, I'm, there's a, a few things bubbling up, nothing, you know, nothing that I'm committed to, so the future is still uh, an open book at the moment. Mm -hmm.
being very cagey, I like that. <laughs> you, you guys are, you actually are masters of being cagey. I mean, there are really? so many, I've watched dozens of interviews with you guys, and every time it's like, well, I can't really say. Yeah. And it's like, that's always, there's, a, there's, there, there's always a question that elicits the, uh, I can't really say. The, the, but, for this interview, <laughs> isn't there one exclusive that you can give me about? Some, some, some spoiler, it can be minor, that's oh, coming up. Just one. Spoiler. It's hard, I know, genuinely, I tell you why, why we're cagey is the, is the these days we make a piece of fiction in public it bleeds information everywhere and sometimes sometimes something is released in the cinema and it feels like an old film or it's on telly and it feels mm. like a repeat before it's because you've read about it you've read the plot you know the ending right. so actually no and for a really good reason is it protects and literally we have seen our audiences grow the more we protect the because plot we've got better at it yeah. definitely because I and mean, you know and it's it's it, it's not something that we regret that Doctor Who's become so successful that people want to know every single grain of detail about it that they possibly can, and and we've got better at protecting the stories mm. and 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 that yeah we probably have got quite good at <laughs> the most being slightly duplicitous the and most questions. important thing is when you see it for the first time listen you will never have that time again yeah and after that you'll always know the story yeah I hope you go and watch it ten more times but. Yeah. It's the most important view, and everyone should do this. I think the whole culture, the whole yeah. world now gives away its for How rare, can you imagine going to a cinema and not knowing anything about the film? Last time I did that was The Matrix, where I was yeah. in America before it was released in Britain, yeah. so I just walked into the cinema and saw this film with Keanu Reeves in it, because I like Keanu Reeves. And it was mind-blowing, of all the films to see, it's yeah. not a film that is literally mind-blowing. And you just sat there thinking, that's the way to experience something, not with all the reviews, not with all the yeah. synopses, not with all the hints and the gossip, brand new fiction. And it's the, the way to do it. This last kind of, Three, it's almost a three-part story, isn't it? These last three that we've got, there are bits and pieces of bled out. Some of that we've done intentionally, and some yeah. of it uh, has happened slightly by accident. But we've still got some absolute corkers oh, in there. Oh yes. Well, the master's returned. Yes. 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 We fessed up about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But no one anywhere knows the master's plan. Mostly. No. Nope. It's, it's that's what's. No. Nope. The, the, um, there's big secrets to it, which is amazing. When you see this plan, it's very public at times. And I mean, a amazing, we got away with filming it. And we got uh, away with yes, it. Um, yes. So there's big surprises to come. And oh, ah, you see, the more you keep talking, the more you give stuff away. Yes. It's going stop to be Stop now. Marvelous. Stop now. Stop. Wait and see it. Honestly, you won't regret <laughs> it. I, I can't wait. Well, David, in a couple of years, when Stephen Moffat calls you up and says, "We've got this five doctors thing that we yeah. want to do," yeah. can we presume that you'll be back? Listen, time will never tell. Presume. Time will tell. Never presume, but never say never, I think, at the same time. I mean, I, I remember watching The Five Doctors when I was a kid, mm -hmm. uh, and it was just about the most exciting thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. But I think you could be living in holy retreat by then. Well, uh, who knows? I could be, yes. I, I could be... Or you could have been sacked from the acting profession. Yeah, or I might equity. be replaced. Yes. So there we go. You know, they might put another actor in my in my suit. <laughs> my waistline might have grown. Oh, someone so much. else would play your doctor. Yeah, wouldn't that be marvellous? <laughs> well, I'm not so sure. Would be. <laughs> I love. I, I think I might write that. <laughs> but you pass through a little time, Eddie, and you come out as as as. Don't cranky. No, it's so exciting. I'm really taken with this. It's my. I think that's an awful idea, frankly. Why? Tenth Doctor, how you've changed. <laughs> <laughs> Anything can happen. Last question. <laughs> yeah. This is for both of you. So when you recall how you felt about Doctor Who as a child, and how much goodwill and how important it was to you, how, honestly, how does it feel to have, to know that so many children look up to you and love this and all that goodwill is coming towards you? How does that feel? It's hard to be objective about it when you're in the middle of it, to be absolutely honest with you. But I do know how important it was to me when I was growing up and what, how inspiring it was to me actually, uh, and what, fond and cherished memories I have of Doctor Who as a kid and if there can be any kids now who are having a similar experience yeah. to the experience I had then, then I will be so proud of that legacy forever really. Absolutely. And I feel vindicated if anything because um, let's be honest there were many years in which Doctor Who was a bit of a joke by, by people who misunderstood it and, and it would be the punchline to many a gag in a stand-up comedian's routine and it was always brilliant and I always knew it was brilliant and there were a lot of us who always knew it was brilliant and time has sort of proved us right and that doesn't yeah. often happen does it <laughs> it's like it's absolutely proved us right and it's the number one show just as it should be so I feel thrilled about that